This edition of I Italy New York is brought to you by L'energia non si ferma mai L'energia crea si trasforma diventa un'idea per generare nuova energia Diamo all'energia un'energia nuova and Chirio chopped tomatoes. In this week's episode, Americans in Love with Italy, Francine Sagan interviews with Peter Vallone, Dolce Vita, Tailored Cuisine with Rosanna and Daryl, Codacchino and Lenticchie, City, the opening of Friar Francis at Brooklyn Borough Hall, Events, Michelangelo and Versilia at the Italian Cultural Institute. And now let's start with Peter Vallone. Peter Vallone is a former Democratic New York City councilman who represented Astoria, Queens for 27 years. He was Speaker of the City Council during the Koch, Dinkins, and Giuliani administrations, the second most powerful political official in New York City after the mayor. Peter ran for governor of New York in 1998 and for mayor in 2001. He currently practices law and teaches political science at Baruch College. He's the author of Learning to Govern, My Life in New York Politics, From Hellgate to City Hall, a biography describing his many years in politics. It is so much fun talking to you about Italy and your experiences. Peter, your dad came to America from Sicily when Correct. he was two. He was two years old. And he, he brought with him, uh, uh, you know, a family, a large family. They settled right here in Manhattan, as everybody else did uh, back at the turn of the century. And he brought with him a, 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 a huge family that stood together the way they had to in Italy because of the kind of politics that existed in Italy then and to a great extent for a long time thereafter. As he grew up, uh, and became, uh, and the whole family kept sticking together. Uh, he realized that there was something special about being an American of Italian descent. And he spent his whole life uh, preaching that and living that. My father would hold huge meetings at the theaters and wherever Italians gathered, 500 people at one time. And he would say, remember where you are. You are not just Americans, you are not just Italian Americans, you are Americans of Italian descent. And that means you're free. And that means you're in the greatest country of the world. And that means there's no dictator here. You don't have a loyalty to Mussolini. You have a loyalty to God, because that's what this country is based on. God, that's where our Declaration of Independence comes from. So, be very proud of being an American because we have such a wonderful heritage. However, now it's different. It isn't just that we believe in God and that we believe in our family. Now we believe in our country because we're free. And he made that. And then he would recite the Declaration of Independence in Italian and in, and in English. Now, your dad, a famous judge, and then you went into politics. How did this Italian American, American Italian background influence you in politics? Well, well, because he, part of his speech everywhere, and part of my speech today, is you have to learn to vote. Stop complaining about whoever represents you. And if you don't vote, don't even bother talking to me because you should vote. You have to vote. If you're gonna complain and you don't vote, then nobody's gonna listen to you. In many speeches I tell people who say, what does my one vote make a difference? Well, I won as the second most powerful official of the city of New York, as Speaker of the City Council, by one vote. So really? I go around telling people, don't tell me because I only won by one vote. 
And if you didn't vote, I might have lost. So don't say one vote is not important. It certainly is. No, we should all vote. You're so yeah. right. Now, you took your entire family oh, yes. to Italy, to Sicily. Tell us about that. We just came back. Uh, my fam I wanted to wait till the youngest grandchild was old enough to understand. So I have eight grandchildren from six, and he's like 30 years old. You know, he's, he's, these kids are so smart. He teaches me how to use a computer. Anyway, six from age six to 24, I have eight grandchildren. I have obviously uh, a rather large family, 28. So we went to Sicily because I wanted them to see where my father was born. So that it was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful experience to see them. What a beautiful country. 28 of you yes. traveling all together? And How we, did you do We had do our that? own bus. <laughs> we had our own bus and we took them from place to place. And they just loved it. And the little ones say, why would anybody leave? They left because of freedom, because of, of the dictatorship that existed, because of the lack of opportunity, the lack of opportunity to work. And one of the things, one of the lessons I brought back here is that wherever we went in Sicily, and I went to a lot of places, the people would say, what a wonderful family, such love. You know, we used to be like that. We don't know what happened. And what I think happened is that the kids, as they grow older, there's 50% unemployment in many places in Sicily and throughout all Italy. They, there's no work. So they have to come to Germany, to France, to the United States, to Spain, wherever there are jobs. And they're losing that opportunity that we now have. The Americans are telling you to send here don't have any idea how lucky they are. They can bring everybody together for dinner on Sundays, like we still do. Well, thank you so much for chatting a little bit about your Italian heritage and the wonderful trips. It was such a delight. Well, it was wonderful to be here, Francine, and I, I think you're wonderful, and I, I think that what you're doing is just by spreading the truth of how great it is to be American of Italian descent. That's wonderful. Let's live the Dolce Vita. Traditional Italian lentils with cotacino, but I was told it's pronounced cotacino. I don't know why the H is in there, but it's really simple. Even I could do it. We uh, cooked two pots of water, and in one pot we prepared the lentils, while in the other pot we, pre we prepared the cotacino. Cotacino tastes very similar to American Spam. I'm gonna mail Rosanna a can. She's never had it. It came in a can. So I would open the can yeah. into the pot, oh. heat it up, and me and my brother and my father would eat it. Oh. I was the chef. Oh. Yeah, oh. this is better. <laughs> While the 20 minutes of those two were preparing, that's when we prepped our vegetables in that saucepan with the olive oil, the garlic, and uh, the tomato sauce. I gotta do that? Yeah. I don't know how to do that. I might cut my hand off. I can do this. We moved that in when everything was done. We moved the Italian Spam, the Cotacchino, with the lentils into the saucepan. And that was all for the flavor, and there you have it. If 
you really want to know the details of this recipe, you can go to Rosanna's blog on the iitaly.org website. This is our Italian city. Let's take a little journey with us. Most High, all-powerful, all-good Lord, all praise is yours, all glory, all honor, and all blessing. To you alone, Most High, do they belong. No mortal lips are worthy to pronounce your name. Be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially my Lord, Brother Son, who brings the day and you give light through him. And he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendor. Of you, Most High, he bears the likeness. Be praised, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars. In the heavens you have made them bright, precious, and beautiful. Questa mostra è come titolo è molto semplice, Frate Francesco. Quindi è una mostra dedicata a Francesco all'interno della Biblioteca del Sacro Convento. Quindi noi abbiamo scelto un numero abbastanza ristretto di pezzi eh, che sono quelli più strettamente legati alla sua persona, tracce, cioè i manoscritti che riguardano precisamente la sua persona o la sua diciamo, glorificazione, quindi la Basilica di, di Assisi, parole, quindi le leggende, leggende nel senso medievale, cioè testi che erano letti in un contesto pubblico liturgico, e immagini, quindi i manoscritti in cui sono miniature che raffigurano Francesco. It is fitting that a man who gave his life to the betterment of mankind has an opportunity to be uh, in a country that is in great need of revisiting what it means to be part of the human experience. Well, I think the short video that showed him in a, a very ordinary clothing, um, linen type in New York is really a message of how we view each other. If St. Francis was alive today because he committed himself to the poor, we would have been looking down on him instead of lifting him up. So we can't only lift up great people retrospectively, we have to lift them up during today's time and we have to consider how we're treating those who are less fortunate than us and I think that's what St. Francis represented. We're all excited about this exposition. The, the 
opportunity to allow Brooklyn Knights and people from throughout the world to come and to view the manuscripts for the first time in the United States is amazing. So we're just excited to have the manuscripts here. I did a little bit of research about him many years ago because my son graduated from a school named after him in Brooklyn called St. Francis of Assisi. So I found out that he had a very good heart and a kind heart and that he was instrumental in uniting some of the people in Italy. So that was a good thing. To be part of the planning committee, the process here at Borough Hall, to see it now come to fruition it is like a dream come true. And to have it at Borough Hall, I think, is absolutely a pleasure. Uh, it's a treat. And for it to be free to the public here in the U.S. and in Brooklyn, I think it's just an added pleasure for everyone. I hope everyone who is watching this video understands the excitement that I have and feel the same way because St. Francis was definitely a saint of uh, the poor, and I think he would have really appreciated doing this for free and having everyone learn about him who do not know about him. This exhibit being open to the public here is more than we could ever, ever have anticipated. The fact that this is going to be open to the public, to the masses, says so much because it's so consistent with St. Francis. When I think about St. Francis and I think about what they have encased the manuscript in, that woodwork, it's recyclable wood from Brooklyn. The fact that we're not just using any type of wood, but it's recyclable, is consistent with everything that St. Francis stood for. So I'm hoping that this exhibit will speak to the hearts and minds and the souls of people, not just in Brooklyn, but in America, because people are coming far and wide just to see this exhibit. After the United Nations, uh, Brooklyn Borough Hall is the ideal place for this uh, exhibition. I think it's uh, outside Manhattan uh, in a borough where uh, there is an enormous Italian presence. Uh, together with other communities, uh, which is important, is an example of uh, cohabitation, uh, co um, understanding. I think it's something in line with the uh, message of uh, San Francisco Assisi. St. Francis is someone that we, we need him here in Brooklyn uh, today. We, lead, we need him here in New York City because we have so many problems, you know, of, of people not understanding the importance of brotherhood, of, of fellow human beings, and of, of peacemaking, you know, that, 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 that idea of guiding people towards making peace with one another is so important. You know, so I, I think it's extremely important, uh, particularly in these days, uh, for this exhibition to be here. And I hope so many people in Brooklyn will come and, and, and visit and, and see it. What does it mean to be a Franciscan in New York? Uh, it, it means to, 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 do, to try to follow in the footsteps of St. Francis, who was, someone who, who was someone who had encountered Jesus. He had encountered Christ and it changed the way he saw everything and especially everyone. So that Francis was someone who discovered in the people that he met the hand of God. He saw that God had a destiny for each one of these people and so to be a Franciscan today in New York means to do the same thing, to meet people, to look into their eyes and to see what God wants for them and to try to help them uh, receive the happiness that God has destined for them. It's absolutely true that the message of St. Francis is about peace, it's also about the environment, but that will be something that any good politician would say. There is something different and much deeper, much more important. It's the courage that uh, a man who repudiated everything, starting from his money, 800 years ago or so, the courage of a man who embraced not only that, but he praised death. 
I think this is the greatness of his message, because he understands and he makes us understand that, first of all, death is part of life, and second, that there is a real life that comes after death. I think that passage marks the difference. That's the real revolution of Frate Francesco. These are the events around town. Per chi eh, conosce un po' l'Italia e la Toscana in particolare e sa dell'esistenza di un campanilismo fortissimo eh, nella regione, noi abbiamo pensato che mettere insieme eh, i quattro comuni della Versilia Medicia era una specie di miracolo eh, che valeva la pena di esportare. Questa iniziativa raccoglie veramente il lavoro degli artigiani, degli artisti italiani e internazionali e il lavoro proprio della pietra, del marmo in una cultura del marmo che è veramente una cosa molto caratteristica della Versilia. Sono Ettore Neri, sono sindaco del comune di Seravezza. Siamo qua per promuovere la nostra terra insieme agli altri sindaci della Versilia per promuovere questo territorio non tanto grande ma assolutamente molto interessante. Qui abbiamo portato il il pezzo più significativo della nostra storia, che è quello appunto della presenza di Michelangelo, dentro un progetto di sviluppo dell'area che abbiamo chiamato la Via dei Marmi e di Michelangelo, con l'idea di far risalire alla strada che Michelangelo cominciò a tracciare nel 1500 per far scendere i marmi, con l'idea di far risalire le persone a visitare il nostro territorio in una sorta di filiera di ritorno che abbiamo progettato fin dal 2008 e che oggi, grazie alla collaborazione con gli altri comuni, diventa una realtà importante. Santa, uno dei centri più importanti della scultura mondiale. Sono residenti nel nostro comune più di 30 artisti tra i più importanti, basti pensare a Botero, Mitorai, Vangi, Finotti, Ciulla. In occasione dei 450 anni dalla morte di Michelangelo abbiamo voluto rendere onore al grande scultore che nella nostra terra ha lavorato vivendo prettamente tra le Apuane e la città di Pietrasanta. Stazzema è un comune nell'Alta Versilia, nel cuore delle Alpi Apuane, fa parte del parco delle Alpi Apuane, è il cuore pulsante e è stato insegnato, insegnato anche di, eh, del riconoscimento dell'UNESCO perché è un patrimonio naturalistico ambientale unico, eh, direi uno dei più belli al mondo. Io sono stato fino a maggio il presidente dell'Unione dei Comuni. Il mio lavoro è eh, favorire la progressiva integrazione dei comuni con la consapevolezza che nessuno da solo può fare niente e insieme invece oggi siamo qua a valorizzare insieme il territorio. Forte del Marmi nasce su un disegno di Michelangelo perché è dove lui decide di far sboccare la strada dei marmi, in quel punto si realizza una prima costruzione, una capanna e intorno a quella capanna nasce Forte dei Marmi. Ecco perché noi siamo legati a Michelangelo. Poi alla fine dell'Ottocento diventa una località turistica importante, il turismo balneare, ma è un turismo particolare che non vuole la folla, cerca la quiete. E si avvicinano anche gli artisti, artisti non solo italiani ma anche internazionali. Scrittori, poeti, disegnatori, scultori trovano ispirazione all'ombra delle pinete che stanno lungo la costa. Ci sono inoltre presenti le maggiori eh, case di moda. I new yorkesi che vengono a Forte dei Marmi ritrovano forse quel qualcosa che una città internazionale come New York, che è il bello di questo essere internazionale, ma sotto un certo profilo è qualcosa che ti manca nel vivere quello essere un piccolo borgo, un piccolo villaggio dove si torna un po' indietro. Ci 
fa piacere vedere come sono stati spesi bene i nostri, il nostro contributo, il nostro finanziamento, perché è veramente un buon modo per propagandare, per sviluppare il turismo, l'economia dell'Italia. Il bene culturale è fatto per essere fruito da ogni generazione, quindi questo penso che sia il modo migliore per cui il nostro paese possa svilupparsi, è lì che bisogna investire. This edition of iItaly TV was brought to you by Colavita Extra Virgin Olive Oil and Baci Perugina Chocolate. Say I love you in the Italian way. Coming up next week. Speciale Teatro, Futurism Between Manhattan and Brooklyn. Massimiliano Finazzer Flori presents Marinetti in New York, his play depicting the hope, unbridled force, imagination, and passion of the founder of the Italian Futurist Movement. Happy New Year!